This is the 15mm Universal Carrier box set from the Plastic Soldier Company. Universal Carriers are small, light-armoured vehicles that played an important transport and reconnaissance role in British and Commonwealth service. This kit builds the Mark II version. The description text on the back of the box still says six carriers, but this box actually contains nine vehicles. The number of carriers was increased just before this kit was released. The back of the box also shows a side and top view of the carrier, as well as Vallejo painting guides for the vehicles and crew. If we look inside the box there are nine sprues of medium grey plastic and a printed instruction sheet. Let's have a look at the instructions first. This identifies the parts and variants on one side, with assembly instructions on the other. You can see there are plenty of options here. The instructions show eight different options. A Vickers HMG carrier, a 2 inch mortar carrier, a 50 caliber armed carrier, two different WASP flamethrower versions, a generic infantry or scout carrier, an artillery observation post, and a 3 inch mortar carrier. The assembly instructions on the back look a bit complex, but they do show how to build each variant. The first few steps are common. Then you need to spot the instructions for the variant you want and follow the numbers and you'll be okay. Now onto the plastic. Each carrier comes on a single sprue of medium grey plastic. All the parts for all the variants are on here. This includes Bren guns, Vickers machine guns, a 50 caliber machine gun, flamethrowers and mortars. There are both crew served and standalone versions on some of the machine guns, so some good parts for the spares box here as well. Interesting omissions are the boys' anti-tank rifle and the Piat, both common weapons for carriers you might have expected to find here. Tracks are one piece and come moulded integral with the hull sides and fenders. Suspension and track detail are good. These are the later Mark II fenders. There are two front hull options with the gun port open and closed, as well as different engine tops for different variants. Some parts, like the OP antenna, are very delicate and care will need to be taken removing this from the sprue. There is some stowage and tarps here as well to detail up individual vehicles. Each sprue has 11 figures including drivers, spotters, gunners, mortarmen and infantry. The figures are a bit small and quite thin but they're okay and should look good crewing the vehicle. Facial and clothing detail is good and clear. Overall, the moulding of the parts here is excellent, with sharp, well-defined edges and good detail. Things like bolt detail are a lot less prominent than current battlefront kits, but PSC kits are always truer to scale and this is appropriate. The number of options and spare parts here is just staggering. This is a very versatile kit. As anyone who's built a British list will tell you, they need a lot of carriers, so the increase from the planned 6 to 9 vehicles in this kit is welcome. Let's get on and build one. Assembly starts with the lower hull and tracks. Snip these off the sprue and clean up before gluing them together. Next comes the bulkhead and rear hull. There are some sink marks on the back of the bulkhead, which will be visible but not prominent on the completed kit. The instructions here also include the front hull, but if you want to include the driver and steering wheel this should probably go in first. These might be tricky to fit later. Here they are in place. Now we can attach the front hull piece. If you're going to include the front Bren gun, probably best to fit that now as well. I had to trim the bipod legs down a bit to get it through the gun slit here. The instructions show the engine cover next. There are three options here. I'm building a Vickers machine gun carrier, so I'm using the engine cover with a mounting hole. Step four on the instructions adds the front light, water can and spare wheel. Next come the rear deck stowage. This is common for most variants, but the artillery observer has a special version including an extra radio and communications cabling. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a sink mark in the stowage bin here and that'll need to be filled. The three inch mortar carrier version mounts the mortar on the back deck instead of stowage. Check the instructions here for parts placement. Since I'm building a Vickers machine gun carrier version, I'm skipping down to step 13 and adding the Vickers gun to the engine cover. If you're building a different variant, work out which step applies in the instructions and go from there. So here's the end result. This carrier is a transport for my Vickers machine gun teams. I've mounted the unmanned gun here, but there is a manned firing option including a gunner and crew figures if you want to include them. I've been waiting for plastic universal carriers for ages, and the Plastic Soldier Company have really delivered. This is a solid, well-detailed kit. Some parts are maybe a bit delicate, but take care and you should be okay. 
there's a bewildering array of variants you can build from this kit. It should be enough to keep British players very happy indeed. Certainly the Wasp flamethrowers should come as a nasty surprise to Axis opponents. Let's look at a bit of history. Universal carriers, also commonly called Bren carriers, were widely used in British and Commonwealth armed forces. Developed from interwar tankette designs, initial variants in service in the 1930s included cavalry, machine gun and scout carriers. These specialist versions were all replaced in 1940 by a single universal design that could be adapted for multiple uses. Production began in 1934 and ended in 1960 with over 110,000 built. Driver and commander are mounted in the front of the vehicle. The engine, a Ford V8, is mounted in the centre of the rear compartment, with passenger and stowage space on either side. The Horstman suspension taken from the Vickers Light Tank series actually warps the track to change direction, a process that made these vehicles prone to throw a track if handled carelessly. Carriers gave British forces some much-needed mobility, used for carrying support weapons as well as for reconnaissance and transport roles. They could also be used to transport wounded quickly off the battlefield. Initially, infantry carriers were armed with a Bren light machine gun and a boy's anti-tank rifle. Later in the war, the anti-tank rifle was replaced by a Piat anti-tank launcher. This generic configuration was used for general transport duties as well as the reconnaissance role, where small mobile carrier patrols were the eyes and ears of infantry units. In the support role, carriers were used as a machine gun carrier for Vickers machine gun teams, and as seen here, the 50 caliber M2 heavy machine gun. The guns could be fired mounted, or the gun team dismounted and dug into cover. Carriers also carried 2 inch and 3 inch mortar teams. Here you can see a 2 inch mortar being fired from the vehicle. Fitted with extra radios, the carrier was employed as an artillery observation post, giving forward artillery observers mobility to stay up front with the attack. But one of the most feared versions was the Wasp flamethrower. This mounted tanks of jellied gasoline with a flame projector at the gunner's position. This rare coloured slide shows the Wasp's flame projector in action. Carriers were produced by a number of British firms, with limited overseas production, often with local variations to the design, undertaken in Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United States. Some of these vehicles were even supplied to Russia under Lend-Lease. German forces occasionally made use of captured carriers like this one mounted with a French 25mm anti-tank gun. If we take a look at the Flames of War stats for the basic carrier, we see it's an armoured tank team, even though the armour rating all around is zero. So it's only very lightly armoured. Even machine guns have a chance to penetrate the armour. The vehicle generally comes with a Bren as the hull-mounted vehicle machine gun, and many lists allow you to equip them with either a boy's anti-tank rifle or Piat, or an additional Bren gun. These weapons are all hull-mounted and the special rules on page 66 of the 4th edition Early War Late War rulebook specify that hull-mounted weapons can only fire at a target fully in front of the shooting team. The same page also has the special rule for HMG teams. If a passenger in a carrier, an HMG team may fire the carrier's hull-mounted machine gun at their full rate of fire of 6, with a 24-inch or 60cm range, as long as the vehicle is stationary. While firing as a HMG team, this counts as the vehicle's main gun, so other machine guns can't fire. If they fire this way, the gun team can't dismount in the same turn, except to escape the destruction of the vehicle. If the vehicle moves, it can only fire at the standard rate of fire and range as a standard vehicle machine gun. Carrier reconnaissance patrols get the recce special rules Scout and Spearhead. Scouts are gone to ground unless they shoot or assault. This means if they're concealed, the enemy will suffer an additional plus one penalty to hit for gone to ground. So deploy recce assets in cover where possible to increase their survivability. Units with spearhead use the rules on page 68 to make an immediate move during deployment to extend the player's deployment area. There are a number of restrictions on this rule, so see the rulebook for the specifics here. So universal carriers are versatile vehicles which give mobility to infantry units and fulfil vital reconnaissance and support weapon roles. These kits from the Plastic Soldier Company look great, and the number of options you can build from this is simply staggering. Nine in a box is a good number, 
but you might need more than one box for all the roles these little vehicles have in a British force. Russian players will love these too, but will need to source appropriate figures from elsewhere. It stacks up well against the new Battlefront plastic carriers, with the plastic soldier kit having more variants, but being more complex to assemble, and with less prominent bolt detail. This is another great kit from the Plastic Soldier Company, very much up to the standard we've come to expect from them. I'm going to use these to replace all my old resin carriers, so I'm off to build an OP version for Gerald, my British Forces Forward Observer. If you like Fog of War content, don't forget to like and subscribe.